Oh, here we go. This is it. To prevent the top of the sliding table from accidentally lifting up, there's these bearing blocks underneath here that ride against the I-beam and they all have these adjustment nuts for the bearings and they are all hexagonal shape with off-centered turning, all eight of them. And originally I was going to mill all of that out using this square stock which would have been very difficult but luckily while I was buying new blanks for the axles because I messed up I found out the local steel yard actually had steel that were already in hexagonal shape and so that would save me from having to mill out the hexagons and instead I would be able to focus more on the turning but unfortunately I bought the wrong dimensions on my first try because I didn't check so I had to go back a second time to buy another one but at least I got it right at the end since it's a hexagon I can center it easily on the lathe then I can face off one side to cut the workpiece to smaller length I'm going to use the parting tool on the lathe and to make sure that I part off the same distance every time I've made this little jig which basically indexes it so that the workpiece protrudes out of the chuck the same distance every single time That's one down, eight more to go. Bad camera angle, but I am using the jig to set up the workpiece once more. So I cut out 10 of them instead of eight. Oh yes, I forgot to deburr them. Having 10 of them would mean that my success rate at turning the right diameter would only need to be 80% instead of 100% but it is still a huge challenge for me. Now I can draw out the center hole on all 10 of them. To prevent the metal from backing out, I've cut a piece of wood to fit the chuck and the metal just fits on like so. And this should be a lot safer than trying to use one of these. After using the center drill, I can use a 5mm drill bit so that I can tap an M6 thread. Now, the hole still needs to be tapped, but before I do that, I want to actually start turning the other end to fit the bearing because I'm not sure whether all 10 of them are going to make it through this stage and lucky did I find some hexagonal shaped pieces of steel it makes off center turning a little bit easier in that I won't need to swap out to the 4 jaw chuck I can still use the 3 jaw and then to make it off centered I'll just put a tiny spacer at the side here and that should just make it off centered Unlike last time, we are going to turn both the shaft and the step at the same time and the mark that I just lined up earlier is actually the mark where the step is going to end and so after I've reached the diameter of the step, I'm going to place this 1mm shim between the sub block and the carriage and that should allow me to finish the shaft. Okay, I think we got it. Just in case you're wondering, that was just a step, not the actual shaft where the bearing is pressed onto. This is where things get real. <laughs> Getting the first one right was really important in setting up my confidence for the rest of the turning. If I failed this, I would have probably have a greater chance of screwing the others up. Knowing this, I tried really hard to get it right, taking every precaution possible. However, I still nearly forgot to put in a spacer that preserves the step. Luckily, I realized just in time when I still had 0.5mm to reduce down. That was such an intense moment, kind of like doubted myself every single time before I made the cut. But now at least it does fit and fits quite nicely. I'm not sure whether the bed and the head of my lathe is actually out of sync or something because I think there might be a taper in it, quite a big one actually. But it might actually just have to do with the way that I'm cutting it, which I cut really slowly at the start and really quickly at the end, so that might have been the reason. But I just need to repeat this another eight times, hopefully just another eight, not ten. This really did take a while. I took short breaks for every two or three that I turned, 
All I can say is the most important tip in doing this is to stay concentrated, find a way to make yourself concentrated. For me, it was just playing some music using my headphones. Luckily, the time lapse mode on the camera doesn't pick up any audio because I was singing the whole time, which would be really embarrassing. My god, finally done! Ah. I did end up mailing all 10 of them, but whether it's sheer luck or just skill to improve from a success rate of 40% to 80% is still quite astonishing. This is probably one of those things that when I look back a couple years later, I'm gonna be like, how the heck did I even do it? Now I can pick out the 8 that works and tap the holes. Next is the metal plate that the adjustment nuts mount to and I've already got the metal cuts when I bought them. Even though they have a little bit of difference in their length, it shouldn't matter too much as I will be referencing off the same side every single time. Time to press the bearings in. And so the adjustment nut basically acts as a cam because it's off-centered. So depending on which way I turn the nuts, it will raise or lower the bearing. Now the wooden parts. The top of the sliding table is basically a mirror image of what I did to the base in the last video. At least it fits. Foot for a second wasn't going to fit. <laughs> Once everything looked good, I can start gluing up the top of the sliding table. And the end caps are just screwed on. While the glue dries, I'm going to make a few modifications on the L brackets. First of all, I got to make sure that they are somewhat square. Alright, this one has some pretty big problems. And I'll try adjusting it using a hand plane. Now I can cut them a bit shorter. And reinforce it by adding a brace. Looks like I interpreted the plans wrong because these aren't supposed to be the same length so at least it's nothing major. Alright, take two. Ah yes, very nice, very nice indeed. Oops. So I hit at the end. Yeah, so I have to trim these a little bit lower. Might have to do with the fact that I'm using 17.5 instead of 18 mil. Before I take the top off, I also want to try the bearing blocks and see whether they actually work. And as you can see, there's a pretty big gap over there. Even though the adjustment nuts are adjustable in height, I still might want to trim this part down a little bit so that it's definitely in range.
and that looks a lot better even the bearing now actually fits with much smaller gap that will be able to adjust and so now it's the board that mounts here the board that goes on here and where the bearing blocks attaches to the inside here but since the bearing blocks has this screw sticking out I have to drop the hole to camera sink for that Well, unfortunately I did mess it up because I accidentally measured it upside down So it does fit, but it's upside down Luckily, uh, found some more wood This is actually plywood Kind of was saving it for another project, but since I don't have any more wood I guess I just have to use it then Now the head of the bolt does fit in but I'll actually like to enlarge a little bit so to fit the washer as well. Then I can mount the side panels. When installing the bearing blocks, I made sure to label them in case of individual differences. So I did the other side but my camera kind of died out on me so I couldn't get any footage. I basically did the exact same thing except that I put the screws on the outside because it was just easier to do so. And because this face is never going to be shown so I even used the old piece with all the old holes and stuff. Before I go any further I'm going to reinforce this board that we glued up earlier because now there's quite a bit of weight screwed onto it. Alright, and see what it actually works. This time with the bearings, so it should be a full simulation of the real thing. 